Good morning. Uh, my name is Peter Randall. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, um, I hope the last couple of days has been good for you. I hope um, you haven't been touched by illness. Um, I hope you've been able to do all your shopping um, when, when you're allowed to. Um, and I'm, uh, and I, I wish life was different at the moment. Um, what I wanted to speak on this morning was um, how, to, how to maintain gratitude and maintain a good um, approach to living and life and God in the middle of a pandemic. Um, many, many people respond to a pandemic with anxiety, uh, with worry, with um, not being able to see anything good come of a life at the moment. Um, I, I was especially inspired by uh, one of our members, Celia. Um, she's been on Facebook um, detailing three things that she's grateful for every day. Um, it's just, a, I think, a discipline that she's keeping just to keep her mind on um, seeing good in, in things. Um, I was also inspired by, um, I work in palliative care, so I encounter people in, in crisis a lot um, and I'm, I'm and I'm regularly touched and inspired by people who um, have really lovely ways of dying um, who think of everyone else in the room except themselves um, people who um, make it easy for people to um, experience a death just by being kind and setting up even letters from the grave um, there's just people who in a crisis do really well and um, have a really good mindset. And, and I wanted to teach a bit about how, how you do that. Um, the book of Philippians was written by a man in jail. So uh, I think he, he knows what it's like to be locked in your house from, for, from certain hours of the day uh, when you're innocent. Um, Paul was innocent of the crimes they were trying him for. Um, and we're innocent, most of us are innocent of having COVID, uh, but we're inside because that's, that's the, um, the best method at the moment of um, constricting a fairly savage virus, okay? Um, nobody likes it. Some people have had more extreme uh, lockdowns than others. Um, some people's lives don't change at all uh, in, in a lockdown because they don't leave the house. They don't see anybody else. But for some people, it's, um, it's, it's awful. It's, it's really difficult. And so I, I just wanted to speak about a book that Paul wrote because he knows what it's like to be in jail. Um, he, he was in jail quite a bit for many years. The last jail he was in was more of an apartment than a dungeon, but, but he still knew what it was like to not be free. Um, and the strange thing about the book of Philippians is you don't you don't hear him complaining at all. You don't um, hear that he's saying, woe is me. The whole book is toned to be joyful, to encourage joyfulness, to, um, to get people um, almost enthusiastic about the fact that he's in jail and that's had all sorts of good, good effects. Um, and so I, I wanted to start by just reading uh, chapter one, verse 12. Um, where he starts explaining his experience in prison. I want you to know, beloved, that what has happened to me has actually helped to spread the gospel so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to everyone else that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers and sisters, having been made confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, dare to speak the word with greater boldness and without fear. So here's a man in jail. And what does he do? He just starts talking about how good God is and how the plan that God has, that is grace um, based on faith, um, resulting in a good, good life and a, an eternal life, this news just pours out of him. Like when the jailers bring him food, get this, God is gracious. God, God can give you a second chance. God doesn't care that you're a soldier and you're treating me poorly at the moment. Or actually, you're giving me good lunch. Um, he, he doesn't care about crimes done. Um, 
And so just imagine this, he's in jail and he's constantly just getting in the ear of anyone who passes by and spilling his story, um, the, the way that God has changed him. Um, and, and he sees himself as imprisoned on behalf of God. Um, he, he was really imprisoned because they thought he committed a crime against the Roman state. But like he, he, he thought he was imprisoned by God, that God had put him in chains so that he could talk about God. And so I, I just want to challenge you, like, why are you in quarantine? Um, are you in quarantine because um, on Thursday we got commanded that we needed to stay at home before eight? Or are you in quarantine because um, partly you choose to be? Um, you, you have things that you can do to network after eight outside moving around the neighbourhood, um, or you have... Um, you, you're going to take these six weeks to be at home and reflect on um, what your life's about. Uh, you're, you're working on other things. Um, yeah, you, you choose sometimes why you're in prison. Um, there's, a, there's a classic case of a guy who was uh, put in a cell. They didn't lock the door, but they in encouraged him to believe they did, and he never left. Uh, just because he'd, he'd chosen to be in the jail. And so you can choose to hate this and you can choose to think, I'm locked in, I can't do anything. Or you can see it as an opportunity to do different things or do things that you've been putting off or have some family time. Like, I, I think people have, um, for some people, family time is hard. For some people, it's a blessing to just have time at home. Um, again, sorry, I don't want to... Um, I don't want to um, paper over the fact that for some people quarantine is really difficult, but, it, but even those who are having a difficult quarantine period, their, their mindset can see things that they can do in quarantine uh, that, are, that is good. Um, the second point I wanted to make was they, they dare to speak boldly. Um, fear and the fear of dying puts a lot of things into perspective. Um, uh, um, Paul uh, was, was not being killed. He hadn't been killed for three years while he was in jail. So, uh, so I think he built into his thinking that death's the worst that can happen and it hasn't happened. So being rejected for being a Christian or making statements about how gracious and kind God is or how God calls us to a better standard of life that's all, that all pales into insignificance against death, which hasn't happened. So in COVID, none of you I know have had COVID and the fear of having COVID is real. Ending up in ICU as a 30 year old is real. Uh, it's terrifying. But as it hasn't happened yet, that's the worst case scenario. Getting rejected from people because you uh, tell them you're a Christian tell them um, that there are better ways to live life than other, others, um, that rejection isn't as bad as COVID. So the next passage I wanted to share with you, I, I'm familiar, um, I've got it memorised because it's part of a song um, and, and a friend used to sing it to me over and over again. Um, it goes, do everything without complaining, do everything without arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without complaining, without arguing. Do everything. And it repeats. And it's meant to get in your head. And it's meant to make you not complain. Okay? And that's what this book is about. A man writing from jail telling a group of people if I'm not complaining in jail, you sure as you sure shouldn't be complaining where you are. Okay. Um, and for, for those of you who are not in jail, and for those of you who aren't um, experiencing 24 hour lockdown or um, having to wear um, medical masks, you, you can complain less than others have. Um, and I think it, it says, as a result of not complaining, you'll stand out like stars in the night because you won't be complaining and people will wonder, why are they so cheery? 
like the people that you come across that are um, cheerful in, in the face of difficulty are memorable. Um, and they, they make you, and they make you wonder why. Um, so I'm br breezing through Philippians. Um, I'd like to encourage you, and I'm doing that by leaving gaps in Philippians, I'd encourage you to read the whole book. It's four chapters, it takes 20 minutes. Uh, you might have plenty of time during COVID to read, Re read Philippians. The chapter three gets into religion and it gets into how we do religion. And pretty much the message of chapter three is, if you do religion by embracing self-righteousness, you will never have joy because you'll be too paranoid, okay? So lots of people do religion by having a list of 10, 10 rules that they keep really well. And they judge anybody on this list of 10 rules for not living them, okay? And usually people who are self-righteous and focused on religion rather than faith in Jesus, the laws are really easy to keep if you're keeping them, okay? Um, there's, some, there's some classics where, um, yeah. But, but Paul just says, your righteousness doesn't come from your list. Your righteousness comes from God, okay? And if your righteousness comes from a list, then you've got to keep a far longer list than you've conveniently compiled, okay? The real list goes 500 deep and you don't keep them all the time, okay? Um, I heard a story last week that a woman who, had, for medical reasons, finds it very difficult to wear a mask. She lives in a town where it wasn't necessary to wear a mask, and she was walking her dog out in the middle of nowhere where she's not gonna infect anyone. Another woman approached her wearing a mask kneeled down, she approached her, so if she was being safe and keeping a distance, she wouldn't have approached her. She approached her, talked to her dog and said, dog, you don't need to wear a mask, but your owner sure does. And then glared at this woman and then left, okay? And so that made my blood boil. That made me really upset on behalf of this woman. And it's, and it's a picture of self-righteousness that somebody has a rule, they don't understand the rule, it doesn't actually have to be kept in the situation the woman was, but she inflicted it on others and then made them feel terrible for not doing it. Um, and then swanned off thinking that they'd done right, they'd stand up for righteousness, okay? People like that don't have joy. People who have the lists of what you need to do to maintain righteousness, never have joy because they're always paranoid either somebody will find out that they're frauds or that um they're too busy watching out for other people to experience joy um so when you when um early on in uh the quarantine when we didn't have to wear masks but they're encouraged i i felt um strongly not to look judgily at people for not wearing masks just because it's counterproductive. But also my faith, I tend not to want to judge people's managing of their own faith because I don't know everything and it's not my job. My job is to accept the righteousness that only God can give and live in, in the grace of God um, trying to be righteous, okay? And what other people do is largely their, their decision having interacted with their God, okay? That being said, my sermon on do everything without complaining, please accept that as a lesson. Um, try not to complain and listen to the rest of the sermon as well, but I'm not gonna follow you around making sure that you um, do it, okay? Because it's not my job. Chapter four, um, another great uh, passage. Uh, you might be familiar with another song, which I'm not going to sing this time. Um, rejoice in the Lord always. I, I say it again, rejoice. 
Again, this is a guy in jail. This is a guy in house arrest who may be executed shortly. Rejoice. Um, if, if you could have a practice of waking up in the morning and just singing, rejoice. I, I'm in God. I have God on my side. Rejoice. Um, you'll be better off. Uh, you'll be like Paul. You'll face crises much better than some people. Uh, the Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. So rejoice always. It's good, it's good for the soul. Now, what's good for the mind, especially during COVID, is the next bit. Um, God does a lot of good stuff in the Bible about helping us maintain good headspace, um, good mental health, um, a godly attitude. Uh, but he's very specific here. Paul is very specific. He says this, Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and the God of peace will be with you. So I, I did this sermon earlier today. Um, I wanted to redo it because at this point I started being self-righteous, okay? I started rattling off all the things that I do that I think are good to maintain good mental health. Um, think... I specified things that I do to make my mind better. And I think I implied that everybody else should do that too. Okay. So um, I would like to just summarize what is necessary. If you find that what you read makes you anxious, if the news you listen to has you on edge, find something else to watch and listen to. Okay. There are, there is, there's stuff going on at the moment. The fact that we have access to 24 hours a day news doesn't help um, anxiety, worry, having a good um, set of ways of thinking. I'm really grateful on the weekend. I have no reason to know how many people have COVID today or yesterday because I'm nowhere near a computer. I have no interest in knowing. Not, not that I don't care, not that I, I'm not um, heartbroken at the fact that people are dying, it's just I know what it does in my head and, and I worry. Um, if, if you find what you read and listen to makes you hate certain people, then get rid of it, turn it off. Um, if you find people, if, if you find the things that you think and watch and, no, if you, if you find the things you listen to and watch make you more antisocial or, or make you distant to people or God or, or you're embracing values that have nothing to do with God, then switch it off. Um, I find it very easy on Twitter to um, censor what goes on in my head. And I'm not selecting things that I necessarily agree with. I select people who I trust to disseminate news so that, so that they're, um, they're, they're challenging and provoking me, but um, they're the kinds of people I think, um, I think of when I think of Jesus. Um, sometimes. So, so what you think about matters, especially in a pandemic. If, if you're um, worried, then find every excuse not to listen to the news. Find things to do like listen to music, uh, watching comedies on TV. Um, don't, don't do media at all and just talk to people on the phone. Um, our phone is underused. Um, get on the phone and ring people. Uh, a lot of people are isolated and lonely. The last point I want to make is, Paul, um, there's a great bumper sticker. There's a great tattoo passage in Philippines, Philippians 4.13. And it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's 4.13, okay? So a lot of people think that that means that they can do anything. They can jump off a cliff. They can buy a Mercedes. They can become president. They can lose 20 pounds in, because God's going to give them strength. That's not what the passage is about. 
Now, God can give you strength to do things that is not mentioned in the passage, but the best way to read the Bible is actually reading the passage where the verse is, okay? So before this passage, we know that Paul is in jail. So he can't get out of jail through Christ who strengthens him. He can't move back to Greece through Christ who strengthens him because he's in jail, okay? So what he's saying is this, I know what it is to have little and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry, of having plenty and of being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Okay? So I want, I want to make this relevant for you. You can be content if you have to be at home and if you get to go to the mall. You can be content if you don't have work, that you're stopped going to work, or if you're working double time because there's so much work to do in your field. You can be content if you have to rely on Centrelink. You can be content if you um, get your normal salary. You can be content isolated from all the people you love. You can be content if you live with all the people you love. Okay, so Paul is talking about a skill that he's gotten over time and he's saying that everybody needs to have this skill of contentment. And earlier on in the book, it meant that he could be content living or dying. He, di he didn't see much difference. He could be content in jail and out. He could be content alone around people. So I want to go back to Celia's practice of writing three things she's thankful for every day. That's the start of this. If you want to start the day by rejoicing, please do. It says you need to in Philippians 4. Um, if you want to start being grateful for specific things and publish them or talk about them, that, that'd be good too. Um, what, what's the, the difference between a Christian in a pandemic and a non-Christian in a pandemic Maybe nothing at all, because the non-Christians are just as good at being thankful at times. But what it should be is the Christian is voracious about talking about God, talking about how God's blessed them with, with enough um, entertainment to get through a um, quarantine, with enough um, technology to talk to the people that uh, they love or, or to talk to the people that they need to talk to. Um, there's all, there's all sorts of things that you can be grateful for because of your faith in a pandemic. And so please focus on all of that. The fact that Paul wrote this book from jail and yet there's no tone of jail is a bad place, I'm miserable, there's no tone of that. The tone is rejoice because we're alive, rejoice because we have grace, rejoice because we have the righteousness that only comes from God, rejoice. Um, and that's all I have to say today.